Hey, welcome to another part of the hybrid mixing series. Um, this is part five of the hybrid mixing series. And today I want to show you um, the so-called stem mixing. In part four, um, I showed you what it can actually do to um, recall a mix, like the outboard equipment and the um, analog console, for example, um, where we have written down notes, showed you what you can do um, with recall sheets and um, for example you can also take photos to recall your session every time you come back um, to your mixing project um, but it's a little bit time consuming and sometimes um, for example when you have um, a session that needs to be a bit quicker and you're pretty sure um, that the mix is completely done there are just very tiny um, changes um, to be made afterwards um, you can always do the so-called stem mixing. And stem mixing is basically you print separate tracks for your rhythm section, like drums, percussion and so forth. Um, you can bring out the synth bass, the guitar basses, for example. Um, separate tracks for guitars. You can also separate in acoustic and electric guitars, for example. And pianos, strings, orchestral stuff like that. And, um, of course, vocals, background vocals, lead vocals and so forth. And finally, also the um, in-the-box effects um, can also print it separately on the track. And <clears throat> what this allows you to do is, um, every time you come back to the session, you have your uh, main stems, so your main um, tracks that you can then change, like volume changes, a little bit of compression or EQ changes. And for example, when the client or you um, who actually recorded the song say well I need a little bit um, more level or volume in the um, vocals just bring up the vocals separately a little bit and can pull down for example the drums a little bit or boost a little bit of the um, bass frequencies of the bass um, you can do that you don't have to recall um, the whole mixing setup um, the output equipment like compressors EQs and so forth or the um, analog console and you just open up the session, um, you have your main tracks there um, that you can work with and then you actually bounce the project to a um, single stereo track and send it off to your mastering engineer. And how to do that, I'm going to show you now. I pulled up an old session of mine, an old song um, that I did back in 2014, I think. Um, I'm going to show you what stamps I would use um, if I have to print them and I'm going to show you how that actually works in my setup. So, um, let's get started and I'm back in a minute. Alright, so here we are. Here is the session. Um, it's a song, Taino Plaque, um, that I did actually in 2014, I believe. Um, let's play a little bit of it so just we can hear what we are dealing with. So pretty standard kind of rock song there. Um, the composition is actually pretty simple. We have drums, a um, little bit of percussion with the shaker. Um, tambourine is in the drums. And um, we got the bass here. We got two acoustic guitars, one and two, left and right. Um, a couple of electric guitars. Um, there's also a little bit of a solo electric guitar here. Um, a lead vocal and a lead vocal in the chorus and two, uh, three back vocals, so one in the middle and the left and right. And what we actually want to do is now um, print the session um, with the main um, kind of elements. And I would suggest in this particular song that those are the drums here um, and also the shaker. And then also a separate track for bass and then uh, maybe a track, a stereo track for all the guitars, including the acoustic guitars, the acoustic guitars and electric together. And um, maybe also the solo um, together. And then we're gonna print the vocal separately and also um, the in the box effects. Um, there aren't quite a lot in the box effects here in this song, just have three on the vocals, which is here, for example, the R verb. Um, then I got also a chorus and a 
um, slap delay with a little bit of a feedback here with the Cranotape tape of waves and I believe also in the electric guitars I have another chorus which is the TAL chorus and um, so with a very wide um, stereo image so with a width and that's basically um, all the in the box effects um, you can basically print also the auxiliary sense um, with the rack units um, I could bring that on the console on a separate um, subgroup um, but in my setup I have compressors in the subgroups I use them mainly for um, parallel compression um, so I would have kind of like a parallel compressed um, effects then and uh, I wouldn't print that so I'm gonna commit um, to the effects to the output effects I'm gonna print them um, through the auxiliary sense and through the console out of the main mix on each separate track and um, I really do kind of like broad strokes with those um, output effects they're just mainly um, reverbs and um, yeah so um, as you can see I've also prepared here now the tracks which is here called the mix down for the uh, mix down for the drums mix down bass guitars vocals and in the box FX um, we could for example also use a separate track for just the back vocals and the lead vocals um, which I would normally or actually do um, because when a client wants to pull up the session again and wants some changes like volume wise or EQ wise just on the lead vocals you can do that just with the vocal stem or the lead vocal stem there um, but just for the sake and the purpose of this video I'm going to show you how to um, do that in a much um, broader way and um, it works with every um, separate actually track um, the same way so um, what you do is here you just hit here on the plus create a stereo track here on audio um, you select the input um, of your main mix out of the console so we're gonna print every um, um, single um, section through the main mix of the console into the converters in my case this is input 15 and 16 and the output here is 28, um, 27 and 28 which is um, the two tracks of so the monitoring section here on my console um, might be a little bit different on your um, setup so just have to look what is the main mix out and where does it go into your converter and back out of the converter into your console on the monitoring section right so you're gonna hit create and there you have a new track and um, as I already did that let's delete that again and let's start here with the drums and what you basically now do is you mute all the tracks that you don't want um, in your drum print so those are the vocals and the in the box effects um, then we have here the guitars the bass and um, on this percussion track here is nothing so we have now on oops one and two the drums and here on three and four is the percussion but the percussion is just the shaker on the left so we're gonna print only um, the left side of it so one two three is now our um, mix down for the drums and always this is very key um, print from the beginning so every track that you're gonna print here bass guitars and vocals should be from the beginning so you have a really um, coherent start and everything starts at bar one okay um, now let's hit just record and listen how it sounds drums come in a little bit later something like there there we go so as you can imagine it's a little bit time consuming because you have to print every um, single track separately through the main mix and back into the console um, but in the end when you want to pull up the session again you save quite a lot of time so I would suggest now I'm gonna um, let run you through and then I'm gonna be back for the bass. All right, so now we've printed the drums and let's head on to the bass here. Um, I'm just gonna mute the drums. So one, two and three here, the sh um, shaker and I'm gonna unmute the bass. And here we go.
Okay, now on to the guitars. Let's mute the bass and I'm gonna unmute all the guitars, acoustic and electrics. All right, and now finally the vocals. Let's mute the guitars. And here we go. I can see it in your eyes every single night. We have fun and it this great. The time is really right. I wish the nights would never come to an end. Rays of the morning sun will send me round the bend. Ooh, girl tamed black. Yet me once and never came back. Ooh, girl tamed black. All right, and now finally, just the in-the-box effects. Um, I brought that up on the console here, which are 21 and 22, this stereo track. Um, those are now just the um, um, buses of the vocals and the guitars. Um, you can actually bring out as many as you like. Um, I like doing it just on the two, um, on a stereo track on the console, and that goes now out on the main mix into the converters and back as um, the other tracks just on the stereo track here and then we can control just the in-the-box effects how much we want of that um, all right so let's hit record All right, so as we now have printed everything, drum space, guitars, vocals, and the in-the-box effects, um, we can now mute all the other tracks of the song here and just play um, those five tracks. So let's have a listen. So there's all now the normal song that we mixed beforehand or we heard beforehand just with um, the five stems playing and we can now just for example play the drums and beat all the other tracks bring the bass in maybe also the vocals and the guitars and now there's no in the box ethics for example when you decide later on well I went a little bit overboard with the um, effects overall. For example, you can completely delete them or um, 
and new temp. Um, or you can bring them down a little bit. Or if you want, in my case, I have quite a bit of chorus going on there on the guitar. And bring it up. Or reduce it again. Or leave it all together. And for example, when a client um, wants to make some changes um, on the vocals, for example, he wants to pull them a little bit up, um, you just have to grab here the fader and pull it up, for example, 1 dB. That's maybe too much, so let's leave maybe 1.2. And of course, you can also um, insert effects or, for example, like a compressor or a cue. Let's do it here on the drums just for the sake of it. And let's pull on the drums maybe. Um, let's make, for example, a little bit of a low cut there. And let's bring out a little bit of the highs with the shelf. Just very tiny increments there. Let's bring also the bass a little bit up. So you can just do that um, with the stems now. And every time you want to actually open the session, don't have to recall the console, don't have to recall um, the whole output equipment. Um, it just can work from the stems. And when you finally decide that you made all the different um, volume changes, for example, and um, compression or EQ overall, just tiny um, amounts of, of changes to the song, um, you can always um, bounce it to a stereo track and send it to a mastering engineer. For example, just hit here on the share, uh, on the bounce, project or section, and there you can select whatever you like, MP3, PCM, M4A, so the um, iTunes standard, and um, export it sample rate, I would leave it as you <laughs> um, recorded it, and hit just here OK. And we gonna bounce it here as, let's say, well, let's leave it like that, the hybrid mixing part for stem mixing, and we're gonna bounce it out. OK, so that's stem mixing. Um, I hope that I could give you a little bit of insight in that. Um, it's actually a pretty normal industry standard um, to use stems nowadays. Um, you can also send it to some, um, for example, um, mastering engineers, they would work with stems. Um, I'm really not that fond of, um, I really like to have just this data track for the mastering engineer and to work from that. Um, don't want to mess too much around with the mix itself. And, um, but it's a very convenient way in a hybrid mixing setup. Um, you can always go back, just pull up the um, DAW session and work from there instead of recalling the whole setup. And um, it's also very good if you work with different projects with different clients, you can um, hop between um, different mixing sessions. So um, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like that. And um, as always, happy recordings and see you in the next video.